Thank you very much for joining us today for the May edition of the HPB TV webinar series. We're traveling to France today, at least virtually, to Paris, where our um, three panelists are waiting for us. And uh, we're going to inform you firsthand on insights from the French TV and streaming market. Um, we have nearly 200 people who registered for this webinar to watch it live and I can see the figures going up now. Don't worry if you can't uh, watch it all or if you've missed it, there will be a YouTube recording available as usual and you'll receive the link to that since you've registered for the webinar and the PDF presentations will be available for download as well on the HPB TV website. As usual, um, we have a 15 minute Q&A session in the end, which means that you can post your questions and please do so anytime during the presentation. And uh, if there's anything you'd like to know from our presenters, please type it into the um, chat box in the little systems uh, corner you can see on your screen. And um, we'll take a look at these questions towards the end of this live webinar. Before I go over to Paris, um, let me first uh, inform you about the disclaimer. As usual, the presentation the presentation represents the views of the presenter and the companies he or she represents, not necessarily the views of the HPB TV Association. The presenter today, the first one is Thomas Follin, Managing Director of Salto. You might have heard about Salto, the great new French streaming platform launched by the major French broadcasters. And uh, we're going to give you more details in Thomas Follin's presentation later on. Frank, Frank Watu, technical leader of Salto, is going to talk about uh, the technical aspects and the HPB TV side of Salto. And uh, we also have a live demo that is very exciting, watching Salto live, um, which is going to be handled by Vincent Crivet, who's the chairman of the HPB TV Association. And uh, I think now it's time, what we're all waiting for, for uh, Thomas Follin to start his presentation and give you an update on the French market. Okay, you can start. Let's just play the presentation. Is it all live as you can see? And uh, we just need a presentation mode and we are all ready. Wonderful, looking good. Okay, you, you have yes, everything? Okay. Yeah, it's okay, all there. Great. Bonjour Thomas, bienvenue. Bonjour, bonjour tout le monde, en direct de Paris. Uh, I'm very happy today to, to talk about Salto and, and uh, HBB TV. Um, okay, let's start with uh, the background of the French TV uh, uh, market and with, this, of course, a, a specific focus uh, on uh, SVOD. Here's how we see the market. Uh, today in France, uh, SVOD represents 1.8 uh, billion euro. What we expect in the three to five coming years is this market to grow up to uh, three and let's say five billion euro, which means it will be um, uh, very, very big and really bigger than what we have today on the, on the advertising free TV uh, market in France, which is 3 billion euro. So we, of course, this, this market will move a lot in, in France in the, in, the, in the coming years. Uh, if we compare uh, to the other countries, uh, we see here on the, uh, on, the, on the left side of the screen, the curve of a penetration of uh, uh, SVOD in, uh, of Netflix and SVOD in all the markets. What we see is the curve is the same in all the countries. Uh, UK today has probably is two years ahead from uh, from France, and the United States are probably four uh, to five years ahead of, of of France. But what we can see is that one of the explanation is today in France one uh, SVOD household has in general 1.6 subscription uh, SVOD sub, sub subscription, whereas it's 2.3. As you the subscription per per uh, as well the household in the UK and 3.3 in the US. So we see that probably the growth will come from new newcomers uh, on the market, and this is the the place that uh, the position that Salto wants to take 
uh, in France. Uh, of course, France uh, benefits from a very uh, specific um, uh, um, TV, uh, TV, re TV reception mode uh, uh, because 60% of the population today receive uh, TV through uh, DSL, uh, whereas it's 50% from, uh, from uh, DTT. Uh, what we also know is that 20% are, exclu are receiving exclusively uh, from a, from a DTT signal uh, their uh, their uh, channels. Um, maybe Frank, you you want to to comment on this one? Yes, um, yeah. as you know, or we will talk about uh, the technical part after. But uh, this is a free uh, integration, uh, actually, uh, of uh, of Salto. I can uh, share you just a, a quick uh, video demo. Um, so actually, we have a uh, six multiplex, and we have a uh, three uh, three ports. We have the launcher of the application. We have the native application, and we have. Uh, the broadcast with the multiplex, and uh, we will talk about the integration about the multiplex uh, just after with uh, all the constraints and uh, with uh, some retro compatibility about all the TV. And uh, we will work uh, for the future maybe to, to have some more compatibility with uh, all the TV park. And uh, I think for the moment, it's, uh, you can, you can uh, talk, uh, Thomas, and I will uh, detail all the also part of the technical part after. So I think we need to get Thomas Fallon back with his video and the presentation. And uh, he needs to be turned into the presenter. So there is the presentation again, and Thomas is back. <laughs> Thank you. You can continue if you like. Okay. So now, if we go to the um, uh, to go deeper into uh, into Salto, uh, what we can say is that it took us two years uh, to bring Salto on the market. Very long time because you know it's the uh, Salto is the result of the consolidation of the French market in the in the in the streaming with TF1, France Television, the French public broadcaster, and M6. Uh, that the the three invest in uh, in Salto, but of course it uh, uh, there were a lot of uh, questions uh, rising up with this uh, consolidation of the market uh, with the uh, competition authorities. So we had to. We had a lot of discussion with the uh, competition authority uh, to uh, finally, uh, on the 20th of October 2020, uh, be able to launch Salto. Uh, Salto today, it's uh, uh, 20, um, uh, two, 250 people were working on the project, and it's uh, uh, a little bit more than 50 uh, in, uh, internal employees. Uh, so it's it's really a startup in France, but uh, with, um, uh, of course, in a very, very uh, big market, as uh, I introduced it uh, in the in, in the in the previous slides. Uh, how we see Salto? You know, in the in the U.S. today, uh, there is what we call the Big Five. Uh, the Big Five in the U.S. When you uh, switch on your your TV screen, uh, you get access mostly to uh, Hulu, Netflix, Prime Video, Disney, and YouTube. These five big platforms are really the, uh, the one that are making the, uh, the, 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 the platform viewing audience. There's really few uh, players that, are, uh, that come uh, uh, after these, uh, these five big ones. So that's why we call them the big five. Um, what is interesting to see is that only one of them uh, is, uh, is uh, proposing in its, off uh, in its offer, uh, uh, the the TV and the replay. This is Hulu. Hulu is doing uh, the the in between um, the TV and the streaming uh, world. Whereas Netflix, Prime, Disney, 
or YouTube are pure um, uh, streaming player. So this is of course uh, an example that uh, we uh, uh, we are having a look, uh, a very curious look uh, at it in France. And what we would like to do is to do exactly the same with Salto. Of course, in France, we will have Netflix, we will have Prime Video, Disney, or, or YouTube, but they will need a place for the French uh, people to go and just access to a French platform, a platform where they will find all the big brands that they are used to. They will find also all their linear TV channels that they are used to, to find uh, the replay, the, the, the catch-up TV uh, they are used to. And this, you cannot find it uh, elsewhere. So this is really the idea is, I would say, to be the French Hulu uh, in France and to be part of this uh, big five. Um, when we think about Salto, we try, of course, it's a, it's a big market, but a uh, very competitive one. But we think that there is real room, a uh, real position to take for, uh, for, for, for Salto. Uh, and really in this uh, way of, um, we, with a big French anchor. Uh, and what we did is that we, we tried to see, okay, people in France, most of them are using TV. But when, when they use TV, they are, uh, you need to wait for next week to watch your program. You need to wait uh, uh, until it's uh, nine o'clock uh, in the evening uh, to be able to watch your, your, your primetime show. And this is really goes the opposite way of what the streaming platforms are, uh, are proposing today. So what we said, okay, let's do exactly the same as what the streaming platforms are doing, but with what uh, TV is proposing. So when there is a, a, a big TV show, in fact, it's available at any time on Salto before it is uh, a broadcast on TV and it's fully available. All the episodes of these TV shows are available on Salto uh, before it's broadcast uh, on air. So the idea is really to do exactly the same as the streaming services are proposing, but with the TV brands. Uh, so it's a way of enriching uh, the French uh, uh, the French household t daily TV experience to make it just smaller and just like it should be now uh, in, in our in our days. Um, one singularity uh, um, I've just mentioned it with uh, with Hulu uh, in France is to have this all in one. I have TV and I have the streaming in one place. When I take about, when I talk about TV. I mean that on Salto, you will find all the major uh, channels network, including their, their catch-up TV series. So all the DTT channels are available uh, on Salto uh, today. But not only, you will also find uh, some, uh, some pay TV channels uh, on, uh, on, um, on Salto. Uh, and all, as I just said, when you have, for example, a daily show, uh, you will find every day uh, the, uh, the, the episodes that will come two days ahead. Uh, so this means that you have two days, you can watch every daily shows two days in advance uh, comparing to the traditional TV. Uh, all the, these big shows are available in full seasons. Um, so this is how we connect to the TV. We have the linear, we have the catch up, we have the previews and we have the full seasons of it. Uh, when we talk about the streaming, this is where we are going to say, okay, there are a lot of uh, incredible uh, uh, French TV shows uh, in France. Okay, they are not available uh, in streaming. So let's make them available in streaming. And this is what we are doing uh, within Salto. All these big shows, big French shows are available on Salto. Um, of course, you will also have all the the uh, the programs that are in catalog uh, means that in in uh, in library these are shows that are no more broadcast but still are very um, uh, important for the French people because they, uh, they these are programs that uh, are um, a part of uh, this uh, uh, TV uh, um, uh, TV experience uh, in France so you need to have them. And the only way, the, the only place where you will find these French uh, library programs 
is also Salto. Uh, when, when we buy uh, some content at Salto, we buy them exclusively because you don't want these programs to be elsewhere. So of course, this is very important. Uh, and finally, uh, you will find all genres uh, on Salto. All genres, and this is what makes another difference with, with the other platforms, is uh, when we talk about magazines, information, uh, entertainment shows, uh, all these kind of programs are not available on the, uh, in, on the global platforms. For one reason, it's very local. And as far as it's very local, it does not uh, match with their um, global strategy. And so this is another, uh, but uh, for the French people, it's still, it's very important to get access in streaming, in this freedom of viewing um, to, to this kind of, uh, of program. So it may, uh, Salto make it, uh, make it possible. Um, we're going mainstream, and this is another big difference. Uh, it's very important for Salto to be this mainstream uh, uh, offering in France uh, because uh, global platforms are more segmented in their approach. Where, whereas uh, we thought about Salto to be very French uh, and, uh, and to be available for all the, um, uh, all the households in France. So, uh, it's, uh, we want this platform to be really uh, anchored in the, in, the, in the cultural landscape. Some example of that. First, it's the biggest window for French creation. Um, you need to know that in France, uh, more than 80 uh, uh, of, uh, 80, um, uh, more, sorry, out of the, the top 100 programs on TV, 80 are French fictions. Are French programs. Uh, so of course it's huge. But when we have a look at the at the SVOD platform, out of these uh, top uh, 100 programs, only three are French programs. So of course we see that uh, people in France are watching French programs, mostly 80% of the of, of the top 100. But when they have their um, as VOD uh, usage, it's only 3%. So what we need to do is, okay, we need to match with these expectations and this is what Salto is doing. So that's why there is a big uh, room, a big uh, position to take for, for Salto there. Second, an offer incurred in the, in the French people daily routine. This is exactly what I was mentioning. On Salto, you find the live channels, you find the TV magazines, you find information, you find reality uh, TV shows, you find um, local documentaries. This is what makes the difference with the, with, with the platforms. Um, and there's also the way of presenting the content. We try always in the editorial approach to have a French touch. And this is very important because we have a dedicated team to editorialize Salto on the French market. All these global platforms don't have such things. It's only translation uh, between the countries. So this is how we differentiate also uh, the model. And of course, all the French faces, uh, all the uh, uh, local uh, uh, critiques uh, are, um, are, are uh, enhanced on the platform to, to make it this, to make this very cultural, local uh, uh, landscape for the platform. Um, live demo, Frank, you want to go there? Vincent, maybe you can absolutely. Start your webcam. I will put my webcam on and set up the demo. So, uh, no, it's not the screen which I should show. Can I? Can you see a TV set with a cook in the background? Yes. Okay. Then it's the right thing. Okay. So, uh, and can you hear me all right? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to show to you the uh, Salto live demo on DTT, and what you see behind me is just a normal TV set. Hopefully, you don't see the brand because I want to be. 
I don't want to favor any brand of the HPB TV member. So it's a mainstream normal TV set, which is connected on a DTT source. And what you can see here, and I will show you that I'm moving from channel to channel. I think this is channel six with a cook program. Now here is channel seven, which is Arte. Channel nine, which is another M6 group channel. And now we come to channel 22, which is six there. And here is 50, which is a brand new channel on the French DTT menu. And this is just an interactive portal where you have a TV guide, Salto, Arte, and Energy, which is another channel. So this is channel 50. And now we go directly, and I will do that with the keyboards or the keys of the remote. I will go to channel 51. And channel 51 is a Salto channel where if you go to this channel, you have only this welcome menu. And I'm on this welcome menu, I am prompted to press the OK button of my remote to start the TV application, which I will do. Hope, well, apparently we are not on the best performing TV sets here and the application takes a little bit of time to display on the screen, but on other TV sets, it will work better and we're working on that. And Franck will mention that. And so now here is the Salto HPB TV application. So you will find all the normal things that uh, Thomas has explained about the application. The only difference is that now here it is an HPB TV application. It's not the web or the PC application that was uh, present in the beginning. Uh, and that is, uh, but all the services of Salto are available here. And again, this is starting from the DTT channel 51. And again, I will show to you. So as you can see, I'm just clicking the 51. Maybe I need to leave the application before or do the, yeah. Here is, I'm going to the wrong direction. So again, here is the normal DTT channels. And then you got on the channel 51, it's a brand new DTT channel, which is only displaying Salto and serving as, as a kind of launch pad for people to access to the Salto application. I must say that uh, some other broadcasting colleagues in France found the idea very good because next to Salto on channel 77, there is a similar Arte portal but the one that we're talking here is the 51, which is Salto. That's probably where I will stop for the live demo and I will hand it over again to you, Thomas and Frank. Yes, um, no, maybe we will, I will share, or we will talk about the, the technical part. Um, We'll share just video. So for this for this first launch, we work with a different technical partner. Uh, first with uh, Bedrock for the Salto native uh, application. Uh, the second partner is Dotscreen, and uh, it's another French tech TV company for the tool launcher and the electronic uh, guide of uh, DTT. And uh, at the end, for the broadcast, uh, we have uh, multicast, one of the six national DTT uh, multiplexes. Um, for the broadcast part, the main goal was to use the less bandwidth as possible. So we choose to work with only one multiplexes to mutualize this bandwidth. Actually, we use uh, 250 kilobytes per second with a black video for these two services. Uh, one of these services, uh, we have integrated the UL of the two launcher with an automatic start directly. Um, with an automatic start. For the launcher, we're integrating a link uh, to the native DT uh, HBB TV app in the channel 50 and uh, the direct link to the TV app in the channel 51. Uh, and of course, in the same time, we develop the Salto application for the launcher. During 
we work with uh, different manufacturers to try to validate the application to the large TV area as possible. It was the main constraint and uh, it's still the main constraint actually. We try to work with a partner to test the app on a large TV park, but it's quite complicated. I hope we will whitelist a new set of the user agent this month uh, and we need to really improve the process of the validation to be able to, to, to open the application on a large TV park. Maybe uh, a solution with an official partner or QA tester to understand if the issue are technical issue or uh, of development or the integration of the HBBTV specification on the screen. Uh, the main uh, issue revealed by some lab is the DRM integration. We publish a video service on demand, so we have a strong constraint imposed by the right holder. Over TV catch up services don't have the same level of constraints and they choose to publish the HBBTV service without any DRM. The second major issue was the integration of the multiple audio program and subtitle. We're still working on it to be able to have a large retro compatibility. So now we will work with my two partners, DotScreen and Bedrock, to improve the HBBTV experience. The first step uh, in the future will be to integrate some logical information on my HBBTV launcher. For example, if a user launch the channel 51 with a non-compatible TV, I would like to understand this information and to redirect the user after he press OK uh, with a deep link to the native app of the screen. If it's really a too old TV, uh, I will just display a generic message with, for example, a splash screen uh, on, the, on the TV. So we will combine the two worlds, the HBB TV with my launcher and sometime uh, the native environment to be able to have a large compatible park. We also working to try to launch the HBB TV app from an external device, from the mobile, for example, or over button, but for the moment it's under reflection. Maybe Thomas, you will just close these topics or talk about other points. Thomas, can you switch on your um, camera and presentation? I think it's there. Is it okay? Yes, you have it? thank you. Okay. Yep. So um, we just need your webcam to see you. All right. Should be okay. Yes, thank you very much. Um, so why HBB TV for, uh, for Salto? First, there's a question of, re of reach. Uh, as, uh, as I uh, told you uh, uh, previously, um, the majority of the French households access to TV today uh, directly from uh, DTT. And 20% of them, and 20% of the global TV households are uh, getting TV exclusively with, HB, with, uh, with DTT. So, um, when we uh, built Salto in France, this platform, uh, we want it to be available to all the French uh, TV households. So HBB TV is, you cannot work around HBB TV to get access to all the uh, TV screens in France. So that's why first, in terms of reach, it's very important for Salto to go HBB TV and DTT. Second, ease of use. As you saw, it's very simple. You, uh, you take your remote control, you are used to, um, uh, to, to use your remote control to navigate from channels to channels. And now, channels 51, you get access to Salto. It's direct, it's simple, it's as you are Traditionally, traditionally used to uh, make it. So that's simple for you. It means that it's not the, the usage of this kind of new platforms is not uh, reserved to a certain uh, population, like I'm young, I'm urban, and it's easy for me to go there. 
it's open to everyone. Everyone knows today how to click on uh, channel 51. So this is the second reason, ease of use. Uh, third, enrich DTT. DTT today, 50% of the population is only receiving um, DTT channels. That is not possible. We need to enrich that. Uh, all the people in France must have uh, access today to uh, easier way to, uh, to watch TV, to the new ways of consumption. Uh, so enriching this DTT for all the, the, um, uh, the French households is also a key issue for us. One single dev, of course, today there are so many screens. Every time it's different technologies. And uh, with one technology, you can access a very little part uh, of the population. We need to have one single dev. It's, it's so obvious. With one dev, you should be able to reach everyone in France. So uh, to go at VTV is a first step to go there. So that's why it's very important, this single dev for us, in terms of cost, of course. Uh, it's also important. Um, direct. The, the way for broadcasters to go directly to the users without uh, passing through their, uh, the, 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 the telcos, uh, this kind of uh, players, HBV TV is one of the solutions there. So it means that you have direct interaction uh, with Salto, uh, with, uh, with HBV TV, uh, and that's also one of the main reasons why we go there. And we also think that through the DTT network, we'll probably uh, have some solution to, uh, to, uh, to leverage uh, carbon issues, for, for, for example. So there are ways to, uh, for uh, innovation uh, and to be uh, eco-responsible in, in that way, thanks to the DTT network. So there's a lot of opportunity there that, uh, that we want to, uh, to, uh, to explore. Um, Frank, you want you want yes, to say something already, about that? Yes, we already discussed about this. About this. Uh, so uh, we have a free. Uh, so it's, this is the same topics that I say. It's uh, the integration and uh, the main uh, debug of the platform. So it's okay. Um, okay, so I think you 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 you. I hope you understood the reasons why we. Was very important for for us to uh, to go at VBTV. This is our first step. Uh, we think it's uh, it's a new way of doing HBBTV with these uh, dedicated channels with a, an HBBTV launcher, uh, and uh, we hope it will uh, give ideas to uh, to many other players to go to go this way, so that uh, with a simple remote control you can access uh, to um, uh, to enrich. Uh, services uh, to to go in every uh, household uh, in all the country. Um, so, and of course, we are uh, fully uh, available to share experience so that this um, uh, kind of uh, innovation can uh, easily go uh, elsewhere uh, to uh, to to help uh, HBB TV uh, to uh, to develop as much as possible because we see all the possibilities, all the opportunities we have with uh, HBB TV when we come from this uh, broadcasting world. Um, and this is a way where um, the, it gives a better uh, position, a better place for a uh, broadcaster uh, in distributing their content when in uh, other uh, ways of distributing, you, you face a very, uh, um, uh, fierce uh, competition. Uh, when we're doing Salto, uh, there is no uh, uh, big platforms there uh, on HBB TV. There is no Netflix. There is no Amazon. All these big players are not uh, on the uh, HBB TV. So until now, so that's uh, a real opportunity for us. Thank you very much. I think we're on time, um, and of course. Uh, we are here to answer your questions. 
Thank you very much, uh, Thomas. This has been really interesting uh, to hear about, uh, first of all, the reasons why you've chosen HPB TV, and of course, first, uh, the insights on the French TV market with this special, uh, I think, quite unique position that um, at TNT, the, the French uh, DTT system uh, has such a high reach and such a high importance in France, uh, which has obviously influenced your decision to uh, opt for HPB TV, I think, to be able to uh, share your service with uh, the DTT audience. And this has now taken place. I think in February, you've launched uh, the DTT service that uh, we've just seen in the live demo. So again, thanks to Thomas, thanks to Frank, and thanks to Vincent for these uh, great insights. And now it's time for the Q&A. And um, as you can see here on the screen, we have already got a few questions. Um, so let's try to go through these first. And uh, then let's see if there's more coming up that we can handle. The first one is, um, is Salto a specific channel assigned to, e assigned to each service provider as shown in the demo? Channel 50 is Salto, channel 77 is Arche, and so on. If so, is the Salto application a broadcast related app or uh, is it broadcast independent? Um, okay, so um, today it's an, it's an experimentation. The role of Salto in France is to uh, provide with this all-in-one approach. So the Salto platform, you get access to all the channels. So of course, when you get uh, to Salto from the HBB TV, uh, platform, then you get access to all these channels. But this is also uh, an environment where um, uh, people can access to uh, RT TV, for example, uh, and RT TV will be uh, the the, the catch-up TV of RT will will be available on Salto, but will also be available as a service uh, uh, in uh, in the in the DTT. Uh, uh, env uh, environment with uh, specific channels. So that's also why we wanted to uh, to bring to the user uh, uh, this uh, program and services guide so that you can access to all the services that are referenced uh, in the, um, uh, on the on the on the HBB TV uh, uh, platform. So I would say that yes, um, uh, DTT players can also bring directly their service uh, on the HBB TV platform. This is really open. And when you get access to uh, Salto, you will also get access to these services, plus all the streaming uh, and all the, the TV experience, which is not available today on the, on the DTT. Okay, next question. Um... If the app is broadcast related, um, why doesn't Salto choose the way to provide the service by broadcast independent apps? I think it is, it is meant that um, HPB TV, the character of HPB TV is of course that it's tied to a TV channel, to the TV brand. But of course there would be a possibility to launch a broadcast independent app, which is not which is like an app that for example, Netflix or Amazon or, or the Zone are using uh, that is completely independent of a TV signal. So is that a way that you're looking at perhaps to increase your audience to have something that's not tied to the broadcast signal? Um, I would say that we have three shareholders today uh, that uh, are broadcasters, that are on the DTT. And that's the reason why we go HPB TV. It's because yeah. they are, I would say, they are paying these frequencies. Uh, so that's why it's, it's an open network uh, for us. Then we will see, uh, we have the, the French regulator uh, that will probably give some rules in the future uh, uh, for that. For probably with a call for tender, we will see what will happen. For sure, the experimentation that we're doing today is opening the market, and we will see how the regu how the regulator uh, will will manage uh, with this uh, uh, um, uh, market opening. Um, but you need to imagine also. I would say that we we, we did not mention that. But for example, when you will watch a program on TF1, for example, at the end of the program, uh, you will have an HBB TV pop-up on, on the TF1 signal saying, okay, if you want to see 
all the coming episodes, all the seasons of the programs you've just seen, click here and then you go directly to Salto, which means that we also use all the interaction, possible interactions on all the signals of our mother companies available on the DTT to promote the programs of Salto. So in fact, on the DTT, there are various uh, access uh, to Salto from every channel and as uh, uh, one entry point through the uh, channel. 51. Okay. Um, we have much, lots, lots more questions coming in, so please, for the moment, um, we have enough and uh, let's see if we can handle all of that. So thank you for your great interest. And uh, let's go on to the next question, which says, um, is there an HPV TV application and some native ones, which means, um, do you have a strategy in which you have an HPV TV application, which is of course cross device, cross manufacturer. That's one of the big main benefits of HPV TV that you don't have to program an app for each TV manufacturer like the ones mentioned here, LG, Samsung, and so on? Uh, or do you have this dual strategy where you can say, well, we have this HPV TV app, which is one for all, one fits all, one size fits all, you could say. And then you have perhaps parallel, in parallel, you have apps just specifically designed for specific manufacturers because perhaps they can offer something else that uh, HPV TV can't or, 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 or uh, is just more convenient to do so. What is that strategy? Is it HPB well, TV only? Um, I would dream of uh, one single dev. I would <laughs> dream of it. Uh, it would be perfect for the future. But this is not um, how the market is made today, first. And second, as Frank said, today there, there, is, uh, some, there are some limits uh, to HBB TV, which we need to address as uh, as fast as possible. DRM, we have problems with DRM when we when you are a pay TV yeah. service, an SVOD service. Um, of course, when you are doing, for example, Arte TV, you don't have DRM, so it's not a problem. You are available on most screen. When you are doing uh, a Salto with DRM, you are not available on all screen. Uh, multiple audio tracks. Uh, we, we know, we see that th there is a problem. Of course, when you have a ser uh, an SVOD service, you want to have a uh, multiple audio track. Uh, it's, uh, it's one of the uh, st uh, st standard pr promise uh, for, for such a service. So we can see that there are a lot of promise that we cannot address uh, today and there are, uh, we, not, we cannot access all the screens. So what we're doing is in parallel, we are developing uh, for uh, um, application for LG, for Samsung, for iSense, for uh, uh, TP Vision, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We are we are working with all uh, all the all the TV manufacturers, uh, but it's a lot of development. It's a lot of time consuming, and uh, in the future it will be a lot of new developments of upgrade. So this is where we we need to converge. Uh, as much uh, as possible. So what we're doing today is what we want uh, as much as possible is to be able, as um, uh, as uh, Frank was uh, uh, saying, to uh, to give the right link to the consumer. When the cons when the user is coming on uh, Salto through HBB TV, if the Salto application is not available through HBB TV because um, it's not uh, the right version, or uh, or uh, DRM uh, is not uh, is not working on this uh, uh, on this screen. Then, if we can link directly to the native environment to the Salto application, and to give the consumer the best experience of Salto, this is how we want to do it in the first steps. So now. Okay, it's available on HBB TV, you go HBB TV. If it's not available, then you go directly with the deep link to the native application. But the problem is when we take it this way is that we need to have deep link to the native uh, uh, environment. So deep link to native environment through HBB TV is also a key issue. DRM, multiple audio track, and deep link to the native environment. So these are the three things that we really need to move in the future to be able to give the consumer, the end user, the best experience. 
Okay. Of course, the user experience is and should always be in the focus, but it's really interesting to see all that effort, all that work and planning that's going on in the background and that kind of learning by doing, experimenting. And then when you finish it all, there comes an update and you have to restart again. I think sure. that is uh, the, un the unwanted part of this job, but also um, the one that keeps us going. And of course, HPB TV as well, is, is the specifications keep getting updated. And that's a kind of feedback also from market players like Salto that uh, HPB TV as the association lives from and uh, keeps developing and, and uh, reinventing itself really to some certain degree. So of course, uh, I can only uh, tell everyone if you're interested in shaping this HPB TV standard and the specifications, please look at HPB TV and membership. And uh, there are lots of working groups where exactly these issues are addressed and where you can help in defining the standards and upgrading and improving the standards. So um, check on the uh, check out the HPB TV website for that. Now let's go back to the questions. Um, there is now um, a question. Well, I think the 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 next one uh, we've we've addressed with the whether it's a native app or HPB TV. Let's go to the next one, which is addressing the competitive environment. Of course, we have other players in France. Uh, here we mention Molotov. Um, in which category would you put um, Molotov compared with Salto? Because in the beginning of your presentation, you said Salto is a bit like the French who so how would you describe Molotov? Where are they? Um, I would say that uh, um, uh, Molotov is, uh, is a distributor, which means that if uh, his um, mission is to get contract with the different publishers to, uh, to propose a pack, uh, a TV pack uh, to the end consumer. When we're doing Salto, we are a publisher. We yeah. are buying some rights, a lot of SVOD rights uh, on the market, and we uh, provide the consumers uh, with these rights. When we uh, buy all the seasons of this TV show, all the other seasons of these other TV shows, these are uh, uh, shows, seasons of the shows that we're buying on the market. We are a pure publisher. So I would say that we are quite far away of uh, what uh, Molotov is doing today. But I would say that we also giving access uh, to, the, uh, to all the TV channels. So in this way, they're doing the same thing as a, a little part of what uh, Salto is doing. But for the rest, which is uh, the really the, the add value of Salto uh, with the preview, uh, with all the all the seasons, with all the the TV shows that are will never be broadcast in France and are only available on Salto. Uh, this is uh, this is really what is Salto today. Yeah, and I think this comes now down to the shareholders that we uh, addressed earlier on. It's the three main French public and commercial broadcast groups, and they actually mentioned in the next question, which says, with the launch of this Salto HPB TV portal, do you plan to create kind of HPB TV interactive campaign, uh, which could be HPB TV pop-up uh, pop-up messages on the on the channels of your shareholders, TF1, M6, France Television, after airing of TV shows part of the Salto catalog, uh, with a direct deep link to the Salto HPB TV portal. This would allow users to discover more content and convert DTT viewers into uh, the SVOD offer as subscribers, I might add. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes. And this is what we will be doing. As I said, there will be on the DTT two ways of uh, entering into uh, Salto platform. First one is, of course, uh, 50 and 51 uh, channels. And the second one is on every channel you will have when there is a show broadcast where it is in a, there is a you can find for example all the seasons available on Salto at the end of the show broadcast on TF1 for example you will have a pop up saying okay let's uh, you can access to all the season right now uh, before it uh, it's uh, it will be aired on the TF1 uh, by clicking here you click there and then you uh, you go to the to the HBTV TV portal, or if you already uh, a subscriber, then you launch directly the program page uh, of the uh, of the uh, of Salto on the HBTV portal. 
So there's really a deep integration with the linear broadcast signal and these messages pop up whenever there is a rele relevant content to discover. Exactly. What you need to have in mind is that for our shareholders, the one destination on the DTT and TV for their, uh, for their brands will be Salto. Yeah. Okay, uh, next page with questions. Uh, is it full broadband or are you also providing experience for not connected users? So this addresses the question whether you need to have an active internet connection in order to um, use the Salto um, service on DTT. Yes, they need to have, a, a, of course, a, a connection. Uh, we will work in the future, and that's why I was uh, talking about uh, innovation to try to leverage uh, carbon issues. So we will see how we can manage that in the future, because we want to be uh, an eco-responsible uh, company and try to find ways uh, to, uh, uh, to give user access to our content with uh, uh, respecting as much as possible uh, the uh, the uh, ecology, uh, yeah. and so we will of course uh, work uh, uh, work on this way of uh, uh, pushing content to the to the end user. Yeah. Okay. Next one. Uh, do Salto plan to have a logo for compatible TV sets? There is an HPB TV logo, of course, that you can see on the screen. Do you plan to have a similar logo on the TV set so that people know they're Salto compatible? Uh, we are uh, absolutely happy to discuss that with the manufacturers. The so thing is, HPB TV is of course a B2B brand, which all of us know, but HPB TV doesn't address the end user. So it might be that the users exactly. are not too familiar. What you need to have in mind is that we are uh, promoting the Salto brand a lot in France. So you today in, I would say in less than six months, we um, uh, we reach 70% of notoriety with the Salto brand in France. 70% in six months. There, there, there is not a lot of brands that uh, can uh, show this kind of, uh, of number. That's so already... let's use it as much as possible to promote uh, HBB TV uh, through uh, through Salto on the uh, on the TV screens. So you said 70% of the TV sets in France are Salto compatible. This answers the next question. Um, I mean, Salto is HBB TV, so that's probably the same figure. Uh, I mean, when, I was, uh, when I was uh, saying 70%, it's of notoriety of the brand. So which means okay. that there's real notoriety of the brand today, awareness uh, of the brand uh, today in France. Ah, okay. um, so let's use this brand uh, to uh, to promote HBB TV. That was more uh, my point. And how many TV sets in France are HBB TV compatible? Do you have any figure on that? Uh, Vincent or Frank, so you have the uh, figure? <laughs> um, please, Vincent. Vincent is back. You need to unmute yourself, Vincent. We still can't hear you. No, we can't hear you. Let me see. You are muted, Vincent. Okay, so what I can say on that is uh, uh, probably that um, um, there are uh, three to 3.5 million active HBB TV, uh, TV sets in France today. Uh, and it goes up a lot because, of course, all the new um, all the new uh, uh, TV screens sold on the market are HBB TV compliant, so it goes fast. Okay, thank you. Now we have the figure. Um, can you turn me mod into moderator again, please, so I can share my screen? And we can go to the next question that addresses cable operators. Um, will Salto offer its service on cable as well or on IPTV? How do they accept this proposal? Yes, of course. And today we are we are already uh, in partnership with uh, Bouygues Telecom, uh, and uh, we have we we made a first launch with uh, Bouygues Telecom uh, in uh, in February. 
uh, in uh, in uh, April, sorry, uh, and um, and we now you can appear your uh, uh, your account on uh, on uh, Wig Box, and uh, next of uh, uh, at the end of the uh, at the end of May you will be able to subscribe directly uh, on your uh, on your Wig Bill uh, to uh, to Salto. So that's. Uh, uh, that's really the we want to be available everywhere. Uh, at the end, uh, for the French market, we want Salto to be in every household. That's really our ambition. That's a good ambition. And that brings me to the next question: How many subscribers does Salto have now? And uh, how a many? Lot. A lot, exactly. I knew you wouldn't. Uh, discuss that, so. <laughs> uh, I, we we don't communicate on that. But what I can say is that we. Uh, uh, we made a pool uh, uh, at the, for the last quarter of uh, uh, 2020, and uh, with uh, IFOP, and it revealed that 20% uh, uh, of the new uh, subscription were uh, Salto subscription. Uh, and they were. Uh, and when we asked the people what are their uh, top three um, uh, services uh, in France uh, to which they want, they would like to. Uh, uh, to uh, subscribe, um, Salto comes in third position. So that's okay. that's really a good news for us, and it it also say that uh, uh, there is a real place to take for local player uh, in yeah. this uh, uh, expected global market, but which is not. There are these big global player, but we don't play. If you don't play the same game as they do, there's a place for you if you go very local, very anchored in the uh, in their uh, in the daily uh, TV usage uh, of uh, uh, of your do domestic uh, environment, I think that's the the big uh, benefit of the domestic players in each country. We're not talking about France only; that they have the local content, and the local content is what people are really interested in. And the big international players, they have different content, so it's more complementary really than. Uh, a, a big competition. Um, there is room for, I think, one or two more questions. And until we wrap that up, I think um, I'll use uh, the one uh, that came in twice. Uh, are you considering an ABOT business model for Salto in the future? Two people wanted to know that. Um, that's a, this is a very good question. Uh, today, we are clearly an SVOD um, platform. Uh, so maybe in a, in, the, in the long term, if uh, the brand is uh, uh, re, uh, really well uh, installed in France, we can consider this kind of business model. But today, no, uh, no. And and for another reason is that uh, the, the competition authority, uh, because of our shareholders uh, and their business model, don't allow Salto to go on the uh, uh, AVOD business model. So. That's not an issue for us today. But okay. who is doing it? So we'll see. <laughs> never say never. <laughs> exactly. Okay, and a, a nice look into the future. I think that's where we'll end the question uh, section now because we're running out of time. And I do have some interesting announcements for you, which you can see on the next uh, screen here, um, because that is the great HBB TV Symposium and Awards coming up this year in Paris on November the 25th and 26th. And uh, if you haven't known it already, Salto is the co-host along with HPB TV. So very proud and honored that Salto uh, has chosen to support HPB TV in this great uh, summit this year, which hopefully we will be able to enjoy in Paris as an on-site event. And um, there is also a preview event, which you can see here on May the 27th, a one hour event uh, that will inform you about what not to miss out on in the real event in November. And uh, some partners and sponsors are able to present their services and solutions. So don't miss out on that. We'll, all send, we'll send you all an invitation to these events, just like to the further events of the HPB TV webinar series, which will of course continue in June uh, with a focus on the US market in July. We will focus on services and solutions for uh, monitoring tools and analytic tools for HPB TV based services and services for local and smaller broadcasters. There'll be the usual break in August for summer and in September or October, we'll return with a focus on the UK market. And if you have some other 
suggestions for webinars and topics, please uh, send them to the HBBTV Association using the email address webinar at hbbtv.org. HBBTV is, of course, also on Twitter and on LinkedIn, so check out these sites regularly for the latest updates. Um, now is the time to thank Thomas Follin, Franck Verbecu and uh, Vincent uh, Crivet for uh, joining us today uh, in this very interesting update on the French market and look into the future. I'm sure this won't be the last webinar we will uh, be focusing on France. So thank you again for the presentations, the live demo and the video. And I'd like to remind you that there will be a YouTube recording because a question has come in as well on this. Yes, there will be a YouTube recording um, probably uploaded to the HBBTV website later on today for the whole um, event. Uh, so you can watch that uh, as a replay and uh, you will also be able to have the presentation as a PDF uh, for download on the HPB TV website later today or early tomorrow morning. Uh, don't worry, you'll get an email tomorrow automatically with all these links so you can access this material by clicking on it. And um, as always, at the end of this webinar, there will be a brief survey for you uh, where you can rate this webinar and uh, ensure that we can improve that. So thank you once again to everyone, to the presenters and to the viewers. Take care and we'll see you next time. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Bye-bye.